Today, you'll learn how to apply the principles of neuroscience in my three-step process to craft a personal statement that is impactful, memorable, and inspiring. I'm Dr. Louise Wen, Stanford-trained anesthesiologist and a physician essay coach. Take a step back and think about the perspective of your reviewer. They are so busy. They're at the end of their workday, and now they have to review all these applications that look really similar to each other, and most of them are pretty boring. Now, by using storytelling, you can hack the brain and be the signal that breaks through that stress and noise. The superpower of effective storytelling is that you're creating images in your readers' minds and powerful endorphins are going to be released so that your reviewer can feel that sense of closeness, bonding, and curiosity towards you. And if they're curious enough, they're going to want to interview you. That's the key. And before we jump into step one, the very end of this video will have some bloopers and peeks behind the scenes. Spoil alert, this is my third attempt at recording this video. Not gonna lie, that was kind of painful. <laughs> Let's start with step one. Step one is source your stories. You can download my free brainstorming tool by clicking the link in the description box below. This is the same document I send all of my clients before our first meeting. So hit pause, grab that document, and come on back. All right, welcome back. So that tool is a list of questions that will help you generate a dozen or so high-impact stories in a very short period of time. The key is to answer the questions in a free-form, journal-style, flow state of writing. You're writing from your heart as if no one else is going to see this document. You want to have spelling errors and grammatical errors. You want to have incomplete sentences. Your goal is to write in your authentic inner voice. And your goal is also not to spend too much time here. Just get the bare bones of each answer onto that paper, ninja style. Get in, get out, and move on to the next question. If you were to give this document a title, it would be All the Reasons I'm Amazing. That's essentially what we're creating with this document. And when you're done, you're going to have a rich repository of stories. You're going to be pulling the stories from this document into your personal statement. Step two is pick your best stories. I use a tool which I've named the Hewer score. Hewer is a mnemonic because I love my mnemonics. H, heroic, U, unique, E, exciting, and R, relevance. H for heroic means that you did something difficult. Tension or challenge grabs and maintains your reviewer's attention because your reviewer wants to know, how did you overcome the challenge? You for Unique leverages the power of curiosity because our brains are hardwired to explore novelty. E for exciting, or at least inspiring, is another brain hack because when we feel excitement and inspiration, endorphins are flooding our brains. R for relevance. When you tell a relevant story, you're making the connection for your reviewer so that you're saying, here's something that I did that was amazing, and that's specifically why I would be a strong future resident and colleague. Now, let's talk a little bit more about relevance because identifying the relevance of a story requires a degree of strategy. So let's take a moment and put yourselves into the shoes of the admissions committee. They are trying to identify who is going to be, one, a strong resident, two, a future colleague they can trust and depend on, and maybe even three, a future leader, researcher, or educator in the field. So when you identify the R of relevance of your story's Hewer score, you're making the job of the reviewer easier because you're presenting yourself as someone who is already on track to be successful. Now let's look at a specific example to experience what happens in your reviewer's brain when a personal statement has a low Hewer score versus a high Hewer score. So to create a paragraph with a low Hewer score, I went to an AI program and typed in the prompt, write a personal statement for anesthesia. And this is what it generated. And I'm not going to waste your time by reading it, but if you want to, you can pause the video to review it. Now, even at a glance, you can tell it has a low Hewer score. It's not heroic or unique or exciting. I mean, it is relevant, so it has one redeeming quality, but overall, zero endorphins are being produced in my brain when I read this paragraph. Now, Let's talk about a story with a high Hewer score. A client applying for a high acuity specialty was working in a hospital during a hurricane and there was a power outage. And so she helped carry her patients down the hospital stairs in the darkness using a flashlight to help evacuate them. That Hewer score is off the charts. It's heroic, unique, exciting, and relevant. I was absolutely hooked when I read that story and I thought, 
I am so jealous of the program that gets to match you because I really want you to be my resident and you're the person I want as my own future colleague. And that's exactly what you want your reviewer to think. And you get them to think that by using stories with high hewer scores. Now, when a client has a paragraph with a lackluster hewer score, I do a couple of things. First, we revisit step one and we do focused brainstorming in that specific area. I ask my client to tell me a few stories, I ask them some questions, and then together we identify the story with the highest hewer score. And that's what I love about being an essay coach because my job is to be your biggest cheerleader. So to recap, in step two, we use the hewer score to choose your best stories. Now we are at step three, the final step where we will organize your stories. From a very big picture perspective, the first two thirds of your personal statement focuses on your past and the last third of your personal statement focuses on your future. So in the first two thirds, which is past oriented, you'll tell a series of stories all with very high hewer scores that reiterate the answer to two questions. One, why are you applying for the specialty? And two, are you someone I want to work with as a resident and as a future attending colleague? The last third of your personal statement is future focused. You'll share your vision of your career plan and trajectory in the context of your past experiences. And then your very last paragraph is going to be a love letter to your program. And I know this adds work and a layer of complexity to the whole application process because each program is going to have its own personalized personal statement. But the reward is that each program is going to feel unique and wanted and special. And my program director friends say that this personalization element consistently stands out and catches their attention. All right, let's recap. Step one, use my free brainstorming tool to source your stories. Step two, pick the best stories using my hero score. And then step three, organize your stories, focusing first on the past and ending with the future. And if you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I would absolutely love that. Head over to my website, physicianessaycoach.com. I do reserve one client spot for pro bono work, so you can inquire about getting onto my pro bono waitlist. Okay, so now I'm gonna go off script. That whole first part of the video, all scripted. Using a teleprompter is really not easy. Hopefully it came across as natural and not, uh, like robotic. So this is how I came to use a teleprompter. The first two takes, I was like, I'm just gonna outline. That's what they say, outline and like you'll come across and you can get your words out or whatever. Uh, false, I did two takes of trying to do this using an outline and both times went down in flames. And so I thought, I just need to script this out and uh, get this onto a teleprompter. So here we have it, I'm talking into <laughs> a teleprompter. <laughs> I've wanted to upload YouTube videos for a few months now. And then every time I get close, I'm like, oh, I need to get a better light. I need, wanted to change these things out. They were white grayish before and I changed them to black. Anyways, everything, like overthinking it. And then I told my husband, I was like, listen, I need you to help me come up with the consequence. <laughs> And so we brainstormed and we came up with the idea that if I didn't publish a YouTube video by a specific date, I would have to pay him $20 per day. <laughs> oh, another thing. Oh my gosh. So I uh, discovered heatless curls. The second take, I tried to use a curling iron and then I burned my <laughs> neck. <laughs> like, so absurd. I really hope that I can get it together and continue to upload YouTube videos on a more consistent basis. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. See you next time. Okay, we're recording. Are you out of frame now? You are still in frame. Boop. Okay, that's better. <laughs> How are you looking, mama? You want to stand up today? How do I get in focus? I'm not in focus. What do I do? Oh. Understand. All right, I'll try it again. Let's try this again. Okay, now I'm in focus. Oh my god. <laughs> I almost shot this whole thing out of focus. All right, Louise, thank god. Good job. In my three step process, am I recording? I'm recording. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a mess. Oh, Louise. All right, get it together, girl. Get it together. <sighs> Can you hear that? It's loud. <laughs> god. That's my. So <laughs> let's start from the beginning. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm getting closer.